Crispy shallots, garlic, and ginger make this versatile noodle super fragrant and yummy. Oh, so delicious. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Dude is Behind the Camera. We're all about simple food, simple faith. Recently, we were invited over to a friend's house for lunch and she made these most delicious noodles with crispy shallots and um, a garlicky soy sauce base in dried noodles. And I thought I would try to replicate it here for you. Using some of my own techniques with her techniques on how to crisp up shallots, it's gonna be delicious. Starting off with six shallots that I've already peeled, and I'm just gonna slice these up and get them going. Just thinly sliced. I am heating up my pot on medium high heat. You don't have to wait for the pot to get hot. I'm adding about half a cup of oil. You just want enough oil to cover the shallots when they're in there. I'm using corn oil today, and you can use whatever neutral cooking oil you'd like. I'd probably stay away from like olive oil because it does have a more of a flavor to it. I'm also using a uh, cast iron Dutch oven, but you can use a deep frying pan or anything with like a, a thick bottom, a heavy bottom pan. Now that the oil is hot, I'm going to add my shallots. And it seems like a lot of shallots, but they will cook down quite a bit. All right, the shallots should be covered with oil, but I just can't bring myself to use that much oil. So I'm just going to keep stirring it around and hope that it's enough. Make sure to stir your shallots around so that they don't get um, burnt at the bottom. You want it to kind of evenly cook. And because I'm not adding more oil to this, I am just trying to make sure that it doesn't burn. But you have to keep your eye on it. All right, you see that the shallots have cooked down. The oil is kind of covering all of it now. And it is a golden color and that's what you want. You don't want it to be burnt. So at this point, I'm gonna turn off the heat and let it continue cooking until the shallots are crispy. So we're turning off the heat, but there's still a lot of residual heat left in the pot, which is why it's important to use a heavy bottom pot. And at this point, they shouldn't burn. You can walk away, give it five minutes or so but I'm just gonna keep my eye on it here. I'm just gonna let it sit. While that is cooking, I'm just going to get the rest of my ingredients going. I've got about a thumb size piece of ginger. It's about half an ounce. And I'm just gonna slice this. You can also grate it if you like, but I don't want the pieces of ginger in there. I just want the flavor. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. Four cloves of garlic. And for garlic, you can use as little or as much as you like. I'm starting off with four, four cloves. It's gonna give me about a tablespoon, maybe a, a touch more. Also going to chop up some cilantro. You can also use uh, green onions if you like. If you don't want cilantro, you can omit it altogether. Green onions would be nice in it. You can chop it up as finely as you like or leave the pieces bigger. I also have a Thai chili that I'm just going to slice up. And I'm just using this as garnish for the noodles. If you'd like, you can also put it in with the garlic and cook it up in the sauce, but we don't want the sauce to be spicy, but it's totally optional. All right, the shallots are looking really good. Now this is what you want and before they burn. So I'm gonna take them out now. Just put them on a paper towel lined pan. Just spread them out a little bit so that they will cool down quickly. All right, so I'm going to use all of the oil that's in here, turning the heat back up to low only. Now I'm making a larger batch of sauce that you can store in the fridge and use this for your noodles for the next you know, couple of weeks or so. And if you want to make a smaller batch, 
well, I just wanted to make a whole batch of shallots because I don't like to have to do this every single time just to get a little bit of shallots. So by doing this, it just, you know, it makes a great meal once, but many times after. Okay, I'm adding my ginger now. And we're just gonna let this cook for about two minutes just to get the ginger flavor into the oil. Well, that wonderful aroma is wafting through the air. It is, it smells so good. Okay, it's been about a minute or two, so we're gonna remove these. Now, if you wanted your ginger to be grated instead, you would add it with the garlic right now instead of cooking the ginger first. And this is only gonna take about 30 seconds. Does this look familiar? This is kind of like for garlic noodles. This noodle dish is similar and is just as flavorful. Okay, adding half a cup of soy sauce. Two tablespoons of ketchup mayonnaise, which is a dark soy sauce. And if you don't have this, you can use a um, regular dark soy, but I would add a little bit more sugar than I'm going to add here. Tablespoon of sugar. And two tablespoons of oyster sauce. Give this a stir and make sure that that sugar is all dissolved. You can hear at the bottom whether or not it's dissolved or not. So these are the noodles I'm using. This is not a brand placement or anything. These are the noodles that we like. They are thin and they come in different widths. So you can get, um, I think, medium and also extra wide. And these only take three minutes to cook, so they're just as quick as an instant noodle. And when you have the sauce already made, you can just make these noodles anytime. So the sauce can stay in your fridge for about a week or two, and you only need about a tablespoon or two tablespoons for the uh, one serving. So it's totally up to you how much you use, as little or as much as you want. And you can add whatever toppings you like so that you can make it a complete meal. I just made some noodles and I'm going to add about a tablespoon, no, two tablespoons to this amount of noodles. And we're just going to kind of mix this around. This is kind of like a Malaysian style lo mein where you get the sauce kind of on the side and you can just add as little or as much as you'd like. I'm going to top with some cilantro. And again, you can use green onions here. It'll be just as yummy, especially if you don't like cilantro. A couple of chilies. Not too much. And don't forget the shallots. See, they're all crispy now. Oh, so good. And that is it. Are you all ready for? Mm -hmm. Who knew something so simple would be uh, so good and delicious? This will be a fast one because I am seriously hungry, guys. Gan lo mein is one of those staples, those hawker staples in Malaysia. Uh, it's really simple. You have these noodles and it doesn't have to be these particular noodles. Uh, I, th I think my memory serves me correctly. It would be like egg noodles and then you would have uh, chasu or a protein on the side and that chasu, you know what your chasu? Your chasu recipe with the pork belly, that would just be amazing with this. Add in a leafy veg on the side. All right, just wanna get it in here to my plate. See if my chopstick skills up to the task. Fried 
shallots on the song on top there. Ooh, yeah. All right, my mouth is watering. Mmm, this is so flavorful. You bite into the lightly fried pieces of garlic and the perfectly cooked shallots and the sauce is infused with so many flavors. Mmm, so good. So this lo mein isn't your standard Cantonese fare. Malaysian lo mein, you can add anything with it just as versatile as the garlic noodles and just as flavorful. So dang good. All right. Thanks, dude. Super simple and delicious noodles. Don't forget that extra sauce that you have. Put it in a jar or in an airtight container and you can keep it in the fridge. And you can have this noodle like pretty much any time. For the cha siu recipe, Check it out. I will see you over there. Bite into little pieces of lightly fried. <laughs> lightly fried.